All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Empty the Bench that meets Bench Talk, which is a special segment we usually do. But this is since this is our normal episode, we decided to bring in a big time guest and we're getting to discuss Blue Jays, Toronto, Canada, whatever you want to call it, in Buffalo playing baseball and Joining us now is Anthony Sprague. He's the general manager of the Buffalo Bisons, which is the AAA affiliate of the Toronto Blue Jays, to discuss the decision of the Blue Jays playing in Buffalo. Uh, Anthony, thanks for joining us. No problem, guys. Thanks for having me. Glad uh, glad we can be here on this cer these circumstances here. So can you take us through the process? I don't know if you call it process or negotiation with the Blue Jays and what convinced the team to play in your stadium? Yeah, I wouldn't call it a, you know, negotiation by any means that we're, when you're an affiliate partner with a major league team, you, you know that they're always there for you and we're always there for them. So when, you know, when even before the decision came down from Toronto, we were, we were in conversations with them about uh, all sorts of things, the, you know, hosting their depth squad, hosting the, the Jays if it ever came up. So, um, you know, for quite a while, they were in a very good communication with us. Uh, Mark Shapiro, Ross Atkins, they really did um, give us a lot of information on, okay, here are the, here's what we would need done. Here are the things that we need to do. Um, you know, there's, they were, and they were open. There's a lot of different moving parts, a lot of different options, a lot of different things that uh, that were going on through that whole process. But from the start of it, we just kind of knew that we were we let them know, guys, no matter what happens, we're going to be here for you. And I think they knew that it was a, probably a sense of comfort for them. You know, they're going to explore all these different options, all sorts of crazy things. It's been a crazy year. Um, so anything was possible, but they always knew that, hey, when when push came to shove, we were going to be here for them and we were going to be ready for them. And and we're excited that uh, that it's actually happening now. Now, originally we had these reports that your club stadium was originally like struck down by MLB because it didn't meet the lighting standards mm -hmm. or something along those lines. What what changed and what exactly is the difference between uh, the lighting for a major league game and a triple A game. And did you hear anything about talks with Baltimore and Pittsburgh as all this was ongoing? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, uh, nothing changed really. Like our, our triple A lighting requirements are different than major league baseball requirements. And the requirements are strictly for uh, TV. Um, players are player, you know, on, on field here, the players would, would see not, you know, no difference whatsoever. Um, but if you see the ballpark from our old lighting to our new lighting, the, the field itself is lit up like a Christmas tree and the <laughs> stands really dark because they focus all the lighting on the, um, on the field. So, you know, no minor league team had, had the correct capacity for, for major league lighting. There's completely different standards. So, um, so nothing really changed in the plan of getting lighting here. Um, Musco lighting is going to bring, um, they're going to upgrade the bulbs uh, a little bit, but the big difference is they're, they're going to bring in portable um, lights that are going to go in left field foul territory kind of outside of the, the um, stadium and right field as well. That will give it enough light um, for the, for the necessary TV. So um, we did, we knew the whole time that that could be done. Um, so, you know, kind of those reports saying, you know, our stadiums, you know, below standards and stuff. Yeah, everyone's stadium is below standards in AAA because you're AAA for a reason. Why would you, you know, get uh, major league standards when you're going to be in AAA, you know, unless you're planning for a, uh, a COVID situation? And if, if you're doing that, then, uh, you know, good luck to you because it, hopefully that's it happens once in a lifetime here and we don't no one else has to worry about it ever again. <laughs> So, Anthony, I, I, I do need to ask, uh, will you need to have extra support staff on site while the Jays are playing there? Um, not, uh, you know, we'll have some of our staff, but the Jays are, are they're here and, and they're really um, going to take over the ballpark in a, in a big way. You know, it's really we're, what we're trying to do is make it into the best we can into a Blue Jays production, into a major league production. So their folks are going to come down here and we're going to support them. 
um, on a game day basis, but uh, it's really going to be um, mostly Blue Jays staff um, kind of running the show a little bit and for us to, you know, just give them what they need, make sure the ballpark, uh, you know, some little uh, odds and end things that, uh, that we know that they don't know because it's our ballpark. But, um, but yeah, for the most part, it's, it's going to be a lot of Jays people with, with us. Um, you know, we did, we have had a lot of people reach out, you know, the, kind of the, you know, big thing in this whole, uh, the whole issue with us losing our minor league baseball season. Um, you know, obviously we had, you know, our, our staff, we, um, you know, don't get to, to work as much. There's not a lot of, not as much to do. But the biggest thing was uh, the internships that a lot of college kids were going to going to get and sign up here and you need to graduate from school. Um, they didn't get them this year. So that really kind of, um, you know, was an unfortunate thing. But, um, you know, a lot of them really have reached out after that saying, hey, if you need anything with the Jays there, let us know. And and I wish there was more there. Um, I do wish there was more um that we could do for people, but uh, it uh, seems that uh, we do have a lot of stuff covered in that, in that sense. So what measures are you uh, going to be putting in place to protect uh, some of those players and that staff? Because I think we just saw today, some Miami players just tested positive for COVID. I think I saw uh, Mike Mustox of the Reds. He might possibly have COVID. So what are some of the measures that are going to be put in at the stadium to protect for COVID? Yeah, I mean it's a it's an extensive 113 uh, page process that uh, that you have to follow in order to host these games and and we're ready for it. I mean you've got all the the different uh, tier players and t- who is allowed to go in what area, and it's it's very strict. I mean that's um, you know even I, I won't be able to to go down on the field, won't be able to go in the stands. Um, I mean, we're, we're really just going to be secluded to our own areas. Um, and they've, they've done a really good job. I mean, just walking through the ballpark, they have got everything labeled, everything set. I mean, they're going to have everything buttoned down pretty well. Um, and, and really it's, it's going to be, you know, do the best they can to, to make sure nothing happens and, and walking through here, I would be surprised if, if anything happened uh, with the structure and set up that the, that the J staff has done here. So, Anthony, uh, you mentioned before that this was not really a negotiation between you and the Jays. You know, they needed help. You were there to help them. But what is it? That, is this something that you think that you can, the Bison's organization can gain from this transaction? Meaning, is this something that the organization can improve on from this experience or build upon? Um, I think what, yeah, yeah there's certainly going to be, a lot of that. I mean, we're going to, we're going to see how a major league production goes down. You know, they're going to um, e- even just today, they, they were uploading some images and stuff to our, um, to our scoreboard and said, Hey, your, your video was off a little bit. I, you know, I, it was stretched out. I kind of shortened it up a little bit and, and it's like, Oh, okay. You know, just little things along, along that line that probably that we didn't expect, you know, we're just here to, to help. Um, but yeah, well, certainly there's going to be a lot of things that, uh, that we gain out of this. Um, but you know, more than that, we all kind of talked about it a little bit when, when it was up and down and, and if this was going to happen, we were all hoping that it was going to happen and, and, and feeling bad at the same time, because I know the Jays wanted to play in Toronto in their home stadium. It's so much easier for them um, to, to just keep their signage and, and go there instead of incorporating um, what they were going to do there and, and incorporate it into our park. Um, <clears throat> but selfishly, we were all like, no, this is going to be great. This is going to be an unbelievable experience to, to be at, you know, hosting a major league team in a minor league park. It's never been done before. And, you know, hopefully it never has to be done again, but um, we just want, you know, we're in, we're in this thing for experiences um, you know, there's not a, not a lot of money to be made working in minor league baseball and the, the, the summers are long, the, you know, your time away from your family. Um, but this is what we're in it for. This, this is it. Like experiences like this, you'll drop everything for, you'll do anything for. So when we knew that this was a possibility, um, you know, we didn't, 
we didn't care about, oh, you know, what's in it for us. What's in it for us is the experience of doing this, hosting this, this the, G, the Jays here, Major League Baseball game here, Major League Baseball season here. And um, if there's anything to be had at the end of the rainbow, that's just a bonus. But we're, we're here to do it for our partner um, because it's our hope and, um, you know, in 10, 20, 30 years, they see everything that we wanted to do for them. And we're going to, they want to be our partner forever. I mean, we're so close to Canada. Um, you know, it's literally five minutes away. Um, there's a lot of our season ticket holders that uh, are Canadian um, that, that come down and it's a shorter drive for them than it is someone that, uh, you know, lives in the suburbs in, in, uh, in Buffalo or Lancaster or Amherst or something uh, uh, out and around. So, you know, the partnership level, means more to us than anything out there. And, uh, and this just doing this strengthens that partnership. Talking with Anthony Sprague, general manager of the Buffalo Bisons, the AAA affiliate of the Toronto Blue Jays, Toronto Blue Jays, of course, playing in Buffalo for the 2020 season. And Anthony, could you envision a scenario? Well, cause we don't really know how long this COVID is going to be affecting uh, us and the MLB and MILB seasons. Do you see a scenario where you may need the uh, for 2021 and beyond for the potential of the Blue Jays needing that stadium? Um, I haven't really thought of that until until you just brought that up. To be honest with you, um, I would hope not. I, I hope you know by April of 2021, this is all shaken out and and done and no problems uh but uh, you know if, if if that's the case and they need to play a full uh, full season here we'll have uh, we'll certainly have everything ready to go and uh and be ready for them but i i i would hope that's not the case and and you know it, it's a long way away that uh, i would think that everything hopefully is uh, is is all set by then so anthony i i need to ask um how are you hold, how are you your staff and your players holding up now that the MILB season has been canceled? You know, that's it's very disappointing. Um, you know, this has kind of been a nice distraction um, to, to have that season canceled. That was you know, we we you know, we it's our life, you know, and and uh, to have that taken care or taken away from you was um, was shocking to all of us. You know, we had a, um, we had a meeting at the end or middle of March, I think it was, um, a whole staff meeting. And I said to everybody, you know, okay, we're, we were closing the offices for two weeks. Um, and I said this, you know, it's not a vacation. Um, it's not a, just time off just to do nothing. Cause we are going to play on opening day. Um, you know, April 13th was going to come and we were going to play. It was going to be a home game and Friday night, it was going to be a, a great night. Um, and after, uh, you know, a couple months, I seemed pretty foolish for thinking that. Um, but I truly believed it. And I really, really thought that we were going to have a full season and we were going to play. Then it was, okay, well, we're going to miss April, but we'll play in May. Okay, we're going to miss May, but we're really going to play in June, no doubt. And then it was uh, maybe the end of April, beginning of May, and I started to really kind of think, holy cow, we might not have a season here. And, and uh, you know, it was really, really shocking to me um, to have that realization. Um, then I had a, you know, a good month to, to kind of deal with it. Um, but it wasn't, uh, it still wasn't, wasn't easy, um, even at that point, getting prepared for it, that, you um, that we canceled that season. It was a dark, you know, really depressing day. It was leading up to it, knowing it was coming when that announcement came. And then that day um, having that press conference was, was the most depressing and down day that I've had um, working here in my 17 years or however long I've been here. Um, and it's hard, to, it's hard to get over, you know, even though this has kind of been a nice, like I said, a distraction and a really boost of uh of energy for, for the city and, and for us, um, our fans aren't going to get to enjoy this as much. I mean, you know, I think they'll, they'll think it's cool to see their stadium on, uh, you know, ESPN or, 
um, Fox or Yes Network or SNY, any of those things, but um, but they still can't be here and, and enjoy it. Um, you know, there's a, you know, a lot of our staff that can't be here and enjoy it because they're, we're, we're really limited. You can't have a lot of people here because of those safety protocols. Um, it's really strict. So, um, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's still a, a, it's, it's very exciting that this is happening, but yeah, it's still, um, you know, tough because we don't have our, our normal minor league baseball season and, and the normal, um, you know, satisfaction at the end of that season when it's like, okay, that was a great season. It's all set and let's start planning for next year. Um, this will be a different type. I wonder what it'll feel like when this is all over, you know, when this will be in October, maybe even mid October, um, if all goes well with the Jays, but, um, you know, not certainly a, a different type of season that, uh, um, you know, I would still like given everything, all, all the stuff that's going on, I would still rather have had a normal season, normal minor league baseball season as we, as we normally would have and not, not have this happen. Now, obviously the, the, when the negotiations for this MLB season happened, they were only really involved in the MLB and the MLBPA. But do you feel like the minor leagues and their unions representatives should have had a say in the matters to try and avoid things like furloughs, layoffs, and a canceled season? Did your team and the rest of MILB have like a plan in place to resume the season and keep players safe from COVID as best as possible? Yeah, we, have, we did. We had our own – our league had its own uh, um, meetings and calls and stuff that – that we were, we were all prepared if the time come, if the time came, like we were even allowed fans in, okay, we're going to allow to have socially distant fans at, you know, when we had our uh, stadium ops director, he went through and counted every seat. He sat in, I don't know what the first seat he picked, but he sat down and said, okay, now I'm going six feet this way, six feet this way. And, and counted seats all the way across mixed in some fours and twos and, and six here and there to, to see, okay, if we're able to do this, what's our capacity and how could we do this? So, yeah. And, and we shared that with all our minor league teams, you know, major league baseball had enough going on. They had their, their stuff, but our, we, we work very well. We're a close knit um, community, the minor league baseball, um, all the different teams and in our league specifically, we had conference calls every week about what we would do um, for, you know, fans, season ticket holders, uh, sponsors, partners, all everything. Um, so we were sharing all kinds of ideas the whole way. And it really, uh, you know, if, if the time came where we were going to be allowed to play, we would have been ready. You're on mute. Nick, you're on mute. <laughs> no, it's, uh, you're up, Nick. Let's try that again. There you go. Let's try that again. <laughs> we don't want to get in trouble with HIPAA violations. But yeah, right. to talk about specific situations, not specifics, but how has this affected your team, whether it's player cuts, staff furloughs, how has it affected it in that regard? Um, you know, we've had every, every minor league team has had to make, uh, you know, tough decisions and we're, we're no different than anyone else. Um, you know, it's been tough and, and, but the, the good thing is this has allowed us to, to, you know, bring a few people back and, uh, and we're excited about that. And hopefully we can get them a uh, schedule for 2021 uh, very soon and kind of go back to business as usual if we can. So Anthony, we see that a lot of minor league baseball teams have an image of themselves as more of a, more of a small business, which kind of contrasts with how major league baseball sees them as like parent club developmental club kind of relationship. Is there any kind of, of clash between those two kinds of, of styles? I mean, do you think that, that there is a balance that a minor league club has to strike in terms of helping out the helping out the you know the parent club but also existing as a baseball entity on its own? Um <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's it's tricky and, and working with the Jays so closely now too, it's kinda you know, it's funny to see the differences between major league and minor league baseball. Um, <clears throat> there were some, you know, we, I don't want to say we work, we work slower than they do because we, we, we have to do more with less, uh, 
um, less at our disposal, I would say. So, you know, we were, we needed to get a couple signs in and, and it was okay. Well, you know, can you print those and, and hang them up today? I'm like, well, I have to order them and I got to get a quote. And it's, and, you know, ma what I've realized is Major League Baseball has every, every, uh, uh, everything at their disposal. You know, they need a sign. They, they go down the, to the other part of the office and get one printed up and made. And for us, it's, you know, okay, we got to call someone. We need to negotiate the price and, and our, you know, make sure they're a good partner with us. And okay, now we got to send the artwork. Okay. Now they need to do their job and it might take a day for them to do their job. And then it comes here. So it's for us, it's a three day process for something that for them, it could be a three hour process. Um, and it's, uh, it's just the way minor league baseball is, you know, we don't, we don't have the same resources and, um, and that's okay. You know, that, that, that really is okay. Um, that, uh, that we don't, we, we learn to scratch and claw and, and every little dollar matters because, uh, because our, you know, we're not making millions of dollars. I mean, that's, that's what minor league baseball is. We're doing this for the love of the sport. It's not, it's not about the money. Um, and that's, fans are coming here because it's, it's not about the money and it's about the love of the sport and it's the love of the experience. Um, I think that's what separates us and, and makes us different. And, and that's okay to be different than, than the parent club and different than major league baseball. Um, you know, and it's not a, there's no sense of a competition with it either. Like, Oh, we got to do better than they do. We just, um, we just want to do our thing and they let us do our thing. And, and it really is a, a good partnership all the way through, I think, with Major League and Minor League Baseball. Now, we've heard rumors of the 40-plus single-A clubs that could possibly be cut uh, in the upcoming season. We've heard rumors of the MLB potentially doing an expanded like practice squad of sorts. I know there's nothing certain about the plans for MILB and its, and its players, ultimately. And ultimately, it is the Major League club that controls some stuff like players' transactions, but how will these potential changes affect you and your role as a general manager? And have you heard anything about the, these kinds of changes? Um, you guys honestly probably know just as much as I do about that. It is uh, in the last, I don't know, uh, six months, there probably hasn't been a whole lot done with that um, between Major League Baseball getting their season underway, negotiating with the players, um, from all all uh, sources that we we have in discussions, there there really hasn't been much done on that front. They really needed to get this season going. They needed to to figure that out. Now I'm I'm hopeful. Now everything's going that uh, maybe we'll we'll creep back up there and uh, and get our agreement done and and set so we can get a schedule. We can start planning for long term things as well too. Um, but yeah, I mean honestly, we're um, much. Uh, we're just as informed as uh, everyone else and check in social media and everything just to, just to see what's going on. If there's uh, been any leaks or any, any additional information. Cause honestly, we, we haven't heard, uh, heard anything on that. And, um, and, and for me, it's, it's, it's something that's just so out of my control. Um, all I can do is worry about, um, okay, what is we we've built, we've got a hundred year old brand here in Buffalo um, you know, we've been a AAA affiliate for 30 something years. Um, we've got a pretty good thing going here and really that's, I don't, I don't, I try not to worry about a lot of those other things and just say, look, we're going to be focused on what we're doing here. And, um, you know, Hey, when, whenever that time is that we have a 2021 schedule, whatever that agreement is, I know that major league baseball is going to work in, in good faith to try and get that done. And we're going to work in good faith to try and become a good, you know, keep being a good partner and, um, you know, hope that uh, that gets done sooner rather than later. So I'll go outside the box a little bit here. I heard rumors they wanted to make T-shirts and everything and they wanted to be the Buffalo Blue Jays and they wanted to take advantage of wherever the city is. Do you think that would have been interesting to be the Buffalo Blue Jays to make the to make the uh, memorabilia uh, of that sort. What do you think of that? It would have been interesting. I think it would have uh, could have done pretty well, but you know, Toronto Blue Jays is, 
it's Canada's team and they are um, the only team in Canada, you know, and, and they, it, it's still Canada's team. Um, you know, we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna host them for, for a summer here, take care of them. Um, but ultimately, you know, they're still the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, the Buffalo thing would have been cool for us, but um, just for us, I think, you know, the, the, the rest of the country, rest of the um, rest of the world still would call them the Toronto Blue Jays. And it would have been interesting for us, but, uh, but you know, not, uh, not that big a deal, I don't think, at the end of the day. Anthony Sprague, general manager of the Buffalo Bisons, a AAA affiliate of the Toronto Blue Jays. We have baseball from Canada in Buffalo, and it's going to be interesting to see what goes on. Uh, Anthony, thanks for joining us. No problem, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Anthony.